Hello, everyone. I believe now you can hear and see me. If you can, please send a message in the uh, chat if you can hear and see me. I've had a difficulty logging on just now. Okay, great. All right, so today we're going to talk about our Finish Addicts uh, feature that was just added on the software today. So let me go ahead and share my screen. Hi, I am Michelle. I'm the one that you guys are usually talking to, or if you've watched any of our knowledge-based videos, I'm the one that's on those videos. All right, so let me go ahead and share my screen. Okay. All right. So um, when you first log into your software today, you should see this red dot up here where it says plan details. And every time you see a red dot, that just means there are new features added to that um, section of the planner. But when it comes to like creating addicts in our system, now we have a couple of different things that you can do to have like a finished addict space. Before you will be able to add your dormers, but the dormers was just kind of for the rendering and the look of things. Now you're able to add the dormer and add walls into your attic space, giving you the opportunity to create a whole room upstairs. So the first thing is in the layout step, once you add your the roof and everything, your level, your roof level, um, you kind of usually will have this like this part of your um, this level of your house that we usually say it's not livable only because you need a level with exterior walls for our roof in our software, right? But now you're able to kind of add this livable space up in that section. So in the layout step, as you can see, I've already gone ahead and I've added my dormer. So you see here in the um, roof step, I added one of the automatic dormers above my garage. And then when I zoom in, Actually, let me remove my roof so you can see. All right, so now, as you can see in here, I've added kind of some dividers just to kind of show you what you're able to do um, once you add your dormer. So while we're inside, if I enclose the space, now you see that these, these walls go all the way up to the roof. So the way I did that was in the layout step, once I added my dormer, I kind of came back and I drew in partition walls. So this area right here and this area right here, and I just kind of have it framed to where the dormer is. And you can see here, and on this section, let me come on the other side, I added kind of like a closet space over here. So that's kind of, that's what I did. Now you're able to just add, if you wanted to create your, uh, that room um, in the dormer space, that's going to be in this section, but a little bit larger, you can do that. I just did this because I added my, um, this attic space on top of the garage, right? So one of the things you want to notice is now that when you add a, let me add a partition wall or any regular wall internally, you're going to have, just kind of click right here. So you have this. So you're going to have this option here where it's gonna ask you if you wanna cut at the level ceiling or cut at the lining, you can click on that to uncheck it. And what that's going to do is the reason that it's mine is going all the way up, let me remove this, is because I my walls are kind of, uh, my roof uh, slope is a little lower. But what this does is it's going to cut the wall space. If it's checked, is going to cut the walls at the ceiling. So I know sometimes when we um, add a interior wall on the ground floor and people are like, well, we want to, we want the walls to go all the way up without actually adding another level. This is what that does. So if we were in the house on the ground floor, right? And go. I'm in the ground floor. And let's say I add a interior wall somewhere here, all right? If I select for it, this wall to cut at the ceiling, and let's say I was to move the, the floor above, uncheck this ground up here. Uh. Mm. Okay, there we go. All right, 
And now let's have it that for it to be at the ceiling. But what's going to happen is because I have this extra level right here, so it's not going to demonstrate it, but the moment that I uncheck it, this wall now is going to go all the way up to the ceiling. So this is for those of you that have added a uh, um, your ceiling or you've added your roof to the ground floor. So that's why it comes, kind of comes in handy. Now, when we go back to your attic space, I'm going to go upstairs, add my ground floor back in. A couple of things that we've now added in the software, you are able to, in the, um, I'm sorry. All right, here we go. In the furnishing step, once you create the opening, well, actually, let's go back to the wall opening step. Once you create the opening in the wall opening step for the space to, to add the stairs, so you're going to go to wall opening, you're going to go to stairwell, select this opening right here, and you're going to add the opening into the space. Uh, you're going to just kind of click on where you want to add the opening. Now, one of the things I want you to notice is different now is it's no longer a green and a red um, color. It's just kind of going to be this dashed line that you can move. And then the cool thing about this is you're able to now connect two openings to create a larger space. And so if I, let's say if I was doing like this without it interrupting something else, right? Now you have this kind of an opening. And if I were to look at this space, let's say I move my stairs. Now you have this type of opening. So that's one of the changes that we've made to the wall opening step. Let me add that back in. And I'm gonna delete this. And as usual in the right panel, you can um, rotate it and you can change the length and the width and everything for that. We also have these more options now for you to add your um, uh, windows to the slopes of the roof. Let me zoom out here. So for here, you have, I've already added a window. So when you click and select which one you want, it automatically is going to be slanted onto the roof. And then you have some trim options right here. So you have a hybrid, classic, and optimal trim options. So once you select that, and that's going to be more showing towards the inside when you're inside of, the, um, of your attic space. It'll just kind of show where the trim sits in the... Um, on the roof. So you can see right here, that's where it's going to show. Now, the next thing you want to do is in your furnishing step, once you've add your opening for your, um, for the stairs, we have ceiling or I should say attic access stairs now. So when you go to your furnishing step, select the catalog where it says staircase, you're going to select where it says straight, select all products and just scroll until you find your two options right there for your stair. So you have the retractable staircase that's already gonna be open and you have another one that's gonna be closed. So it's kind of like a trap door retractable staircase. And you're gonna actually add this. I'm going to deactivate my roof and then deactivate the levels. Then I'm gonna go down to my ground floor and you're gonna add this where you've added the opening for your space. And the best way to know that is if you zoom in up here, you will see where the camera is, where this dashed opening is. So you kind of kind of wanna guesstimate, it's, I see that it's right next to the door. So I'm just gonna place it right here. Remember, do not add um, furnishing directly to the wall because then you can't rotate it and it'll be stuck directly on the wall. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add my levels back up and then I see, okay, I need to move the space and I can just adjust the opening. So I'm just gonna extend the length. And the width of the opening. And remember, as you're placing any furniture, continue to move your camera around just so you can see from all angles. All right, but now if I'm going downstairs to kind of look through the garage, I want the stairs to kind of be facing the other way. So I'm just going to mirror that to flip it around. I come back upstairs and I'm just gonna click and readjust it. So now I have a pair of retractable stairs coming from downstairs, coming up into my attic space. 
All right, I still have this wall that I drew here, so let me go ahead and delete that. All right. So now we have, when you add the roof back in, you have this workable attic with a dormer that you're able to add, create a, a room or create, add windows and, you know, make it into a livable, livable space. Now, something else that we have added, if you go to your layout step and down where it says the surface areas tab right here, you will see that we have uh, a couple of different options. We have our um, display living area, LA is for living area, and um, the TIA is total internal area. So you're able to set the parameters for what the living area is going to be. And this is the maximum height of the living area. So that's um, that comes in handy, especially when you have an attic space and you see where this the dashed line is. So the maximum height for um, my living area here is going to be seven feet. So because there's a slope roof up here from the wall all the way in, this whole area is not from the ground, from the the a finished floor all the way up to the roof, it's not seven feet. So you see that clearing kind of goes in until you get like a seven foot clearing and you can adjust that to however you want. Now that also comes in handy when you, you can check to display both. So you will see now in the layout step, you have two options, our living area and the total internal area. And you see that both of those options are a different number. The living area tells you Everything that is in a clearing at least seven feet and above, right, that's where the living area is. But the total internal area is going to count everything within that space. So all back, like, on the other side of the dashed um, lines, um, where it's going to be less than seven foot or whatever number that you have it, that's what that is. You can uncheck it so you only have your total area. So you see the A, that's just going to be the, the area of that space. And you can uncheck it and ch check it. Um, now the same thing goes like uh, um, as usual. You have your glazed area where it has where the compass is exposed north, south, uh, east, and west where the windows are. That's our that's usual. Now when we go to our plan detail step. Let me show you what's new. Select your surface area right here. Now you'll see three new tabs in your plan detail step. The first one is going to be summary of your spaces. The second one is a detailed spaces. And the third is going to be your floor area. So let me start with your summary of spaces. I go down to my ground floor and I have my summary of spaces selected. And that's just going to tell me what every single space is. Um, my lot area, my house footprint, my house footprint with the roof, the land not built, um, that's if I already, if I have a lot drawn, as you can see here, I do not have a lot drawn. My living area, my total internal area, which is gonna be TIA, um, your annex area. And most of the time the annex areas, maybe it's a garage or if a storage space and you will automatically, um, you can select what you want in the annex area. One of the things I also wanted that you know is in the layout step, when you go to your room types, and you select something like a, let me go up here. If I select something like a hopper, it's automatically, um, it's not going to count that into in the living space, right? So just FYI, if you change the name for something like a hopper, it's not gonna be counted into the living space. Now, if you, and you notice that once I added it, it took away, the living area and the internal living area. Now, if you are to, let's say, where are you add this as a um, garage. Now, if I, this is the, I, I want you to notice that this, I'm on the roof level, so I'm in the attic space, not the actual ground floor where the garage is. But if I were to change this to a garage space, you notice that you automatically get added into the annex area. But if you're creating this into an attic living space and you added that as a garage, it's not going to be counted in your um, living, your um, the living area because now it's automatically counted in the annex area. So you have to uncheck that. Any space that you don't want 
to that you need to be counted into your living area, make sure you uncheck it from the annex area. Now let's go back to your plan details. All right, so on your surface area, now you have your summary of spaces. Um, and then you can, same thing goes where you can uncheck to display both your living area and the total internal area, or you can check it, either one. And if you uncheck it, it's only going to show the area of that space. It's not gonna differentiate between the internal area or the total internal area and the living area. For now, I'm gonna keep it checked. Then the next option you have is your detailed spaces. So this is where now you have each floor is going to be brick, brick, broken down. Each floor and all the different rooms are going to be broken down. So if I go down to my ground floor, you see now that I have all the rooms for my ground floor automatically checked here and my garage is checked as in the annex area. So it's going to, the, the um, total internal area is going to be excluding what I have in my annex area. If I uncheck that, then it's going to be included. The garage is going to be included. So just remember, whatever that is checked in your annex area, it's not going to be counted in your total internal area. For now, I'm going to keep that. Then this is my ground floor. I have all my rooms checked that I want to be counted in my living area and my total internal area. And you will see both of those, uh, um, those measurements right here. And then you also have my roof level. So my roof level, I only have um, technically room one and room three, and that's because I have a vaulted ceiling in my master bedroom. And then room one is just this open space, which is going to be a flat ceiling that I have downstairs that um, I have here. And then you have um, room, I have over here as garage, because we've changed the name. So you have your garage um, and it's not counted, but you notice that I still have my living area and my total internal area. And there's still this dashed line, because as you can see with the type of roof that I have, with the slopes around the house, all the um, the clearing for the bottom slopes, this this these whole areas are not cleared at seven foot. Now you can make it five feet, you can make it seven feet, but it's going to be up to you to change it. And then the next one you have is your um, floor area. So now your floor area, this is specifically for the ground floor. And I'm going to, are you? So in your floor area now, you will see where it's, um, let's see. You will see where it's highlighted blue. That is showing you all of the floor area, right? So that's counting all the floor areas that where it's blue. And you can, um, I believe you can uncheck and check if you need it. So if I was to check this area right here, and if I go up to my um, my roof level, I have room one and room three unchecked and the garage unchecked. But I want to count that into my um, floor area. So I'm going to check that one and I'm going to check room one. And then it's going to show this just the it's technically kind of like the internal living area, because as you can see, the clearing on the outside where it's no longer seven foot, it's not checked. So it's only checking the living area. Um, the floor area in that space. Does anybody have any questions? Let me switch back. Okay. Oh. All right. So um, if you have any questions, go ahead and send a message in the chat um, and I will try to kind of go back to check it out to answer your questions. Um, you also see at the bottom here that you have my, the total um, square footage and that is counting every, all the, the, every um, room that's checked. So just keep that in mind, okay? If you wanted to get more of a detail for the whole house, the summary of spaces is where you're gonna go. If you're trying to get more of the details for each room or each level, the um, detailed surfaces is where you wanna go. And if you want to get the surface area of just the total living spaces, um, that's not counting where the clearance is, where the slopes are, this is where you're gonna go, the floor area. All right, another change that we have added in the folder step, now you're able to have a better look of your attic space in your, in your cross-section view. So I've kind of already done that. One thing is make sure you've checked all your furnishing that's going to be in that attic space. In the furnishing step, make sure you 
let's go. Let me just show you what I mean. Make sure you've added to, sorry, there we go, to show it in the um, roof and the cross section facade plans. So just make sure each time you add a piece of furniture that you want to show in your cross sections, um, make sure you check and add it and then check this box towards the bottom in the right panel from the furnishing step for it to show up in your um, folder step. So now let's go back. So now you see here, when I switched, when I um, did the cross section, I did the cross section to kind of show the attic area as well. And now you see the clearing here that we've added. Now you're able to see the dormer a little bit more. You're able to see the opening for the dormer um, windows. Um, and you're able to see the clearing a little bit more of the kind of like the insulated area that we've added in um, for your roof area. So all the areas that are insulated, um, you're able to see it now in the cross section. Does anybody have any questions? Or is there anything else you'd like me to go over before we get off today? I think I've covered um, most of everything that we've added, all the new features that we've added. And if you guys have any questions, um, go ahead and send us an email at support .com and we'll be more than happy to help you guys. We also have a number of different tutorials and videos in our knowledge base that we've added for the attic, the finished attic space and everything else. So just keep that in mind. All right. I think. Okay. All right. I'm glad you guys enjoy it. Where is the videos? Okay, you can find the videos in your knowledge base. Um, when you go to your planner right here, you see this question mark that says help resources is right next to the chat icon. You will see if you have a professional and enterprise account, you will see the chat icon. If you don't have one of those, you'll just see this question mark next to your, um, your, your save icon. And all of our different sections will be here. And then you can click on the section that you need. It will take you to our knowledge base on a different window. Um, with all the different tutorials and videos to kind of help you out. So this is easily accessible as you're working. Okay. Thank you guys for joining me today. Have a good day. Bye.